Hello and welcome. This is Peter from Wildcat Hollow Farm. Today we're going to do a little garden update, um, a midsummer garden tour. It's the middle of July and midsummer has gone past and the garden has exploded like crazy. We've had lots of rain lately and everything just kind of grew over my head and you can see the jungle back here and I'm going to take you into our little jungle and show you what we got growing. Um, we just came out with a German video uh, yesterday and figured that uh, all of our American friends would probably like to see and hear and find out also what we're talking about and what we're growing. And so it's time to show you around and give you a little update on our garden. Um, it's doing really well this year. Um, some things are doing better than last year, some things are doing worse than last year, or not doing at all. And I'm going to show you around and tell you what we got. Here we are in front of the garden to give you a little view. Um, these posts here are going to be the fence at some point that separates the garden area from the front. And this is also where we've planted all our fruit trees here along the fence line. This is our in-ground garden this year, 70 by 40, uh, fairly big. And if I swing you around here, this is going to be, sometime in the future, this will be the entrance to the garden area. It's not finished yet, as you can tell, it's just posts now, but that's gonna be a garden gate. And behind the garden gate, sometime in the future is going to be uh, a sitting area with uh, a pavilion or something like that and but that's still far in the future so far all you can see here is uh, fence posts and over here to the left also where we planted our trees but now we're going to head into the garden I'll take you along and we'll go in here through our gate and go into our garden. Oh, and we have a little visitor. May I present Freya. Hello Freya. Our new little puppy. She's probably looking for a little poop spot. No, she had to pee. This is Freya. She's out here doing nothing but nonsense. And where Freya is, Barnaby is not far. He's probably in the shade somewhere. Okay, let's go into the garden. Freya and Barnaby playing. They're already getting along really well. Barnaby, Barnaby is sweet and gentle with her mostly. It's too hot out here. We are now in the garden and we'll start out here in the front over there in the background you can see the garden shed and the chicken coop and we'll start out here over here in this first row, we are having some radishes that were letting go to seed. For some reason, the radishes didn't do very well this year. We didn't have any actually, so we just let the few that we did so um, go to seed. That way we'll have some more seeds for the spring. And we have here a trellis. That's supposed to have peas on it. It does have a few peas on it, but for some reason, we really didn't have any luck with the peas this year. First they didn't germinate at all, then they germinated and grew very sparsely. And we have beans here, bush beans in the front, uh, in front of the peas. And the bush beans are growing vines this year for some reason. Really, really funny. And the bush bean vines are taking over the trellis of the peas. But, well, that's just the way it is and we're just letting them 
do their thing and we actually did harvest some peas today not many small bowlful and we started just started harvesting the the beans and they're very prolific those are uh lake bush beans green lake bush beans i think no blue lake bush beans um we've had those last year and they were very prolific and um they're doing really well and we've got this whole row with beans and peas and in the next row over here you can see uh, a sad one of our sad uh, occasions here we had um, a squash vine borer go into our pumpkins and basically uh, they're half dead. This is an English uh, sugar pie pumpkin which is really nice and we were really happy that it grew so well and then the squash vine borer got into it but it does have a lot of new growth on the edges so we're hoping that it's still gonna continue growing here you can see all the damage to the to the vines they turn they turn white and yucky and really nasty but we do have some pumpkins on here this one is is starting to ripen now already and we have some over here that are still green and as i said we have a lot of new growth here in the back so i'm hoping that we'll maybe even get more and at least uh, get the ones that are on there to ripen. Then over here on this trellis we have tiga melons which are not doing really well at all this year. I don't know why. I've sown them same time I did last year. Last year at this time this trellis was already overgrown by them. I have three on this side that are really tiny still. They're really small. I had a I had to put seeds in here like three times to get them to germinate even and on the other side they're growing but they're really really not very I mean they're sparsely and their their leaves are very small this year it's I don't know it's just just doesn't seem to be the right kind of year for tiga melons I have no clue everything all the other pumpkins and squash is growing like weeds and this one is just kind of not really doing well. Or maybe it's just starting off. We'll see. Um, here underneath the chalice we had bok choy. Um, that's uh, mostly harvested already. There's still a few in here. But uh, that's already harvested most of it. Here in the back behind the chalice we have a huge uh, white scallop squash that's growing very beautifully and it's prolifically putting out little white squash that we've already been harvesting. Very, very nice. I'll show you here if I can go in between the leaves here. That's the little like nice kind of patty pan type squash. Really growing very prolific. In the background here in the corner is my little sunflower patch. I'll take you over there. I have all kinds of sunflowers growing in here. This was just a little corner of the garden that I didn't know what to do with. And so I dug it all up, uh, took the weeds out, tried to take the weeds out anyway, and just planted some, some sunflowers in it. I've got uh, golden coin sunflowers in here and Fantasia sunflowers. And the autumn beauties that were so beautiful and, and six foot tall last year they're actually not doing anything this year. They're kind of sickly and small. Here, this is one in the middle, in between the weeds. Um, I don't know what happened. They're not, they're kind of strange this year. So it's really totally different than it was last year, but the sunflowers in the front here are doing nice. They're just, they're just starting all now to open up and blooming really beautifully. This is our corn this year. As you can tell, it's very, very large. I would say probably uh, eight foot, 
10 foot, I don't know, it's huge. This is country gentleman corn, um, a very old variety, um, a heritage corn um, that Mike wanted to grow. It's, it doesn't grow in, the corn doesn't grow in, in neat rows like the normal corn, the normal sweet corn does. It kind of grows all weird and, 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 and not in rows. Um, it's also not very yellow, it's more like a, like a white corn. I have no idea how it tastes, I've never had it, I've never even heard of it before. But it's growing beautifully, it's got nice, nice silk everywhere and nice tassels. And we're really hoping that this year we can keep the, the, the earworms out. We've actually did spray it and we're hoping that we're going to have a lot of corn this year. It is huge and we have a big block growing. I don't even remember how many we put in but it's it's quite a few and there's gonna be lots of corn. Okay now in the next row over here we have um, what is left of the cauliflower. Cauliflower is not really doing great in this heat and it's starting to produce heads but they're not really looking very good. They're, I've tried to put the, the leaves over the heads to keep them keep the sun out but I'm not sure whether we're going to harvest any of this or not. Uh, I'm just letting it grow for now and still hope that we're going to get heads off of it. Next to it is still a few red beets in here. That was from uh, the first time I've stoned it in the spring. Um, that was all that came up and I've transplanted them here next to the next to the cauliflower and they actually did well after I transplanted them and we have some some nice big beets here that I'm gonna have to harvest here in the next couple days and right next to it this is actually the new beets that I've sown uh, that I've uh, sown again and the second time I've sown them they actually all came up and they're looking very good now uh, still far from being done but at least they're growing and they're looking healthy despite the heat. Um, over here in the end is where we had all the kohlrabi. Um, this is a German type of kohlrabi. It's a blue kohlrabi. It's called blauer Speck, which means blue bacon. Um, do not ask me why it's called that. I have no idea. But it's a very, very nice tasting kohlrabi. And it really is purple. Not really blue, it's more purple. But it's beautiful, the, the kohlrabi, the young leaves can be eaten. We've put some of those in the salads. Um, the bulbs themselves have a nice, uh, mild, um, I wouldn't say nutty, but, but a, a nice, mild cabbage-like uh, flavor. Very, very good. You'll just need to try it. It's, it's my favorite. Actually, my very favorite uh, German vegetable. Most of the kohlrabi we've already harvested. These are the last three. We have to take these out now in the next couple of days also. I've already re-sown uh, in the middle of this new bed, uh, this empty bed now, almost empty bed. I've re-sown um, some squash, I think. Yes, I've re some squash in here, um, and patisson squash that's kind of a little bit like the white scallop, but uh, more colored. We grew that last year already and have eaten the last of that just the spring, so it's stored really well, and I'm growing some of this here. I've already put seeds in. In the next bed, we are now coming to the jungle department. Uh, Everything from here down basically is jungle. As you can see, this is welcome to our jungle. Um, in this next bed, we have the watermelons. We are growing sugar baby watermelons. The same amount that we grew last year. I have six plants in here. Two hills with three plants each. One down there. 
a plant, uh, a hill of three plants over there, and one a hill of three plants down here. And this whole bed is full. It's exploding like crazy. The the watermelon loved all this rain. It's growing out of the bed already and everywhere else. And we have we've harvested the first watermelon already, and there's like almost ten more already on there. Um, over here in this next bed, I'll just keep on showing you what I can see here. Um, in this next bed, we have butternut squash. Also, the butternut squash is going wildly crazy. This is Waltham uh, butternut squash. It's growing from this bed and it's growing along the side of the garden on this side and it's already creeping over here to this way. Um, also very growing very prolific and has uh, quite a few uh, butternut squash on it already. Um, here in the middle we have a trellis. This trellis is almost completely overtaken already by camu camu squash, a variety that comes from New Zealand. We've already grown this last year. It was a very prolific grower last year. Sadly though, we had all our squash last year was really, really, really badly infested with squash bugs. It was so bad that in the end we even had to burn down all the squash plants, all of them. I mean, we burned down, everything was so infested and packed with, with bugs, it was not even funny anymore. And there was no way to get rid of them. We tried last year, we tried biologically, we tried neem oil and it worked a little bit, but not not even uh, closely to good enough to get rid of them or even even slow them down. Everything was infested. We burned all our, all our squash plants last year in, I think it was end of July that we burned everything. I mean, literally burnt everything to the ground. And this year, we said, no, we can't do that. Uh, we didn't want to spray, but there is just no way around it here. We are in the middle of the national forest and we have so much wildlife and so much bugs and stuff here. It's not even funny anymore. And if we want to eat any of our, every, any of the stuff that we grow, then we just have to spray. There is, sadly enough, there is no way around it. So this year we sprayed and so far so good. We have not, I mean, we have a bug here and there, but the Japanese beetles started uh, early, like right after I've started sowing, uh, and the first starts came up in the spring that the Japanese beetles were here. They hit our trees, our fruit trees hard, um, before we even noticed it. And, uh, but after we sprayed, we sprayed a couple times, and uh, so far, everything looks good. So, on this trellis here, almost overtaken is camu camu squash. Very prolific, very, very tasty. Um, you can harvest it young as a summer squash or you can let it grow and store it over the winter. And it's, it's a great little squash. Um, over here, in between the watermelons, I don't know if you can see it, I'm gonna have to come down here and show you this up close. See if I can do this without falling over. I have borage. I have borage growing in here in between the watermelons. The watermelons are almost choking it out, but they're still starting to bloom now. And already the bees and everything are starting to come down here because they love borage. Um, also in, in between here, I have everywhere in between, I have calendula growing. Some of it is also choked out by the crazy growth of, of all the squash this year and the melons um, but I have calendula growing in here everywhere and like I said this is borage. Borage is a very very neat plant it can be eaten um, it attracts pollinators like crazy it reseeds itself I hope anyway because it's really really a beautiful and very useful plant. Here in the back some more watermelon 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 and I can show you in here, um, see if we can see it. Watermelon and over there is melons underneath and here is melons underneath and everywhere, everywhere we have melons growing. 
Okay, over in this bed, underneath the trellis, believe it or not, somewhere in there is cucumbers. <laughs> um, you can't even see them anymore, but somewhere under there, I can even see that I need to harvest some of them. There's already some ripe again. I've already picked quite a few of them. Um, there is a uh, dark cucumber growing in there, in all that white jungle. And on this side of the trellis, we have sweet dumpling squash. Sweet dumpling is also a very nice prolific squash that's climbing up the trellis on this side. Um, makes small hand size, uh, well, a little more, a little bigger than hand size uh, fruits. Perfect to grill on the grill or to stuff with uh, to stuff with some some meat and some some other veggies and sauce. It's uh, a very, very tasty little squash to grow. We've also had uh, the sweet dumpling last year already growing up this trellis. Right next to this here is our red curry. The red curry uh, last year was, was also hit so badly with squash bugs that we only got a couple of fruits off of it. This year, however, it's uh, on the other side of this bed, it's growing in this direction, and on this side of the bed, it's already growing underneath and into the corn, and it's got fruit on it. Let me see if I can come over here through, and I'll show you this already here. Nice, beautiful red curry squash. Isn't it perfect?